Hello everyone, I'm Yuan Qiao from the Center for Research on Intelligent Perception and Computing, Institute of Automation, Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's my pleasure to introduce our recent work on graph contrast learning with adaptive augmentation. This is a joint work with my intern and supervisors from the Institute. Today my presentation will consist of four parts. I will briefly introduce the background of contrast representation learning, and then proceed to methods and experiments. And finally, I will conclude my paper and uh, discuss future research directions. Graph representation learning, which aims to learn a low-dimensional dense vector that encodes structures and node attributes, enables efficient feature learning for graph structure data. Graph neural networks in recent years have become a de facto standard for learning graph representations. However, most GN models are established in a supervised manner. In real world, Labeled nodes may not be available to models and is often time consuming and labor intensive to obtain high quality labels. Also, supervised learning seeks to learn the inductive bias encoded in labels instead of generic knowledge that can be reused across different downstream tasks. Here I include two quotes from Professor Malik and Professor Yanagam. They advocate that label supervision is not always necessary. Considering the amount of unlabeled data is substantially more than labeled data, it's a natural idea to exploit various labels that come with the data itself for training the model for free, known as self-supervised learning. Nowadays, self-supervised graph representation learning has attracted a lot of research attention. In essence, self-supervised models employ proxy tasks or pretext tasks to guide learning the representations. These tasks are framed by predicting a subset of information using the rest in the input data. For example, we might rotate the image at random and train a model to predict the rotation angle of each input image. Since the prediction task is made up, we usually do not care its performance, but rather we focus on the learned representations that would carry semantic or structure meanings. In general, the proxy tasks fall into two lines of development. The first part, Generative or predictive models usually train the model in a supervised manner, where the labels are self-generated from the data. The other category, contrastive learning, on the other hand, requires data-data pairs as input. It performs discrimination between positive and negative pairs. Contrastive learning aims to maximize the agreement of latent representations under stochastic data augmentation. Seem clear, sets a paradigm for contrastive learning. Specifically, it derives two versions of one sample and pushes the embedding of the same sample close to each other and that of different samples apart. There are three main components. The first one is data augmentation pipeline T, the encoder F and the representation extractor G, and, contrastive and the contrastive mode and objective L. Formally, for any data point X, the contrastive learning aims to learn an encoder function f such that the similarity between x and its congruent part x plus is greater than x between x and its dissimilar sample. The negative x minus. The score function is encouraged to assign large values to positive samples and small values to negative samples. Here, x is also commonly referred to as an anchor data point in self-supervised learning literature. We can construct an n-way softmax classifier to optimize it, which is referred to the inference E loss. The critic function here can be simply impl implemented as a cosine similarity function. The inference E loss distinguishes a pair of the representations from two augmentations of the same sample, apart from n minus one pairs of representations from different samples. Unlike visual representation learning, the traditional work of network embedding inherently follows a contrastive paradigm, which is originated in the skip brain model. To be specific, nodes appearing on the same work are considered as positive samples. For example, node to vector first samples short random works and then enforces neighboring nodes on the same work to share similar embeddings by contrasting them with other nodes. These traditional node embedding approaches could be seen as factorizing a, proxy, a, a, a proximity matrix which have difficulty in leveraging node attributes. We now turn our attention to GNN-based contrastive learning. 
since modern genes include more powerful encoders for learning representations by aggregating information from neighborhood. However, gene-based contrastive learning are still in their infancy. A growing body of graph contrastive learning literature has investigated different contrastive modes and contrastive augmentation techniques. The first contrastive mode defines which embeddings to pull together or push apart. The second data augmentation function transforms the original graphs to congruent counterparts. Mainstream work involves two modes, global to local and local to local contrastive learning. Global local contrastive learning, for example, DGI and MVGRL, maximize the agreement between node and graph level representations. The graph local contrastive learning mode can be seen as a proxy for the local to local mode, but the graph readout function should be injective to distill information from the node level embeddings. The local to local contrastive learning, for example, follow up work GCC, RACE, and the graph CL, instill the need of an injective function and directly maximize the agreement of node embeddings across two augmented views. Another critical design consideration is data augmentation for graph structure data, which transforms the original graphs to congruent counterparts. Most existing work adopts a bi-level augmentation scheme, consisting of both structure level and attribute level augmentation. In this work, we argue that augmentation serves as an crux for contrast learning, which controls what the learned representations should be invariant to. It establishes strong implicit biases in the network, but how to integrate augmentation schemes into graph contrastive learning is still an empirical choice. In essence, contrastive learning seeks to learn representations that are insensitive to per perturbation induced by data augmentation. The transformations therefore aim to produce a view which is distinct from the input, but is also imperceptible. That is, the transformation should not fundamentally alter its identity. Considering that there is discrepancy in the impact of nodes and edges, we argue that augmentation should preserve important structural and attribute information of graphs, and this is the main motivation of our work. Let's introduce our proposed method. The proposed GCA mainly consists of two stages, data augmentation and contrastive learning. At first, we generate two correlated graph views by randomly augmenting the graph structure and the node attributes. Then, we train the model using a contrastive loss to maximize the agreement between node embeddings in the latent space. Rather than contrasting node-level embeddings to global ones, we primarily focus on contrasting embeddings at the node level. The contrastive object it takes in the form of NTZ loss, the normalized temperature scale cross entropy. Embeddings of the same node across two views constitute the positive pairs. We do not explicitly generate negative samples, and all other node embeddings across the two views are treated as the negative samples. Then the final embedding, uh, the final objective is defined as the average over all positive node pairs. In this work, we propose that augmentation techniques used in contrast learning should be adapted to the given graph. Following previous approaches, we conduct bi-level augmentation at both topology and attribute levels as well, but more specifically, we propose to keep important structures and attributes unchanged and perturb possibly unimportant links and features by setting the removal probability inversely proportional to important scores of edges or attributes. From an amortized perspective, we have emphasis important structures and attributes over randomly corrupted views. At the topology level, we sample a modified edge subset with a certain probability. This probability should reflect the importance of that edge in the graph topology space. In network science literature, node centrality is a widely used measure to quantify the influence of a node and we derive edge importance from the centrality scores of nodes at the two ends. To alleviate the impact of nodes with heavily dense connections and overly high removal probabilities, we further transform the edge importance followed by a normalization step. And in this work, we consider three widely used centrality measures, the degree, the eigenvector, and the page rank 
potentiality. Here we visualize the obtained edge removal probability on the carried club dataset. It is seen that the three measures all highlight connections around the two central nodes shown in orange that are the two coaches of the club. Further experiments also demonstrate negligible performance difference among the choice of centrality. At the attribute level, we randomly mask a fraction of dimensions of node attributes with zeros. Assuming important feature dimensions appearing in influential nodes, we calculate the frequency of each dimension. Then, similar to topology level argumentation, we transform the important score into masked probabilities via log transformation and normalization. At the end, I would like to briefly talk about the theoretical basis of our contrasted learning framework. In representation le learning literature, the info NCE, uh, the InfoMax principle is a guideline for learning good representations by maximizing the mutual information between the input and output of our neural network. We first draw the connection between our objective and the mutual information maximization. Theoretically, our object J is a lower bound of mutual information between the input X and node representations in the two graph views. However, since the node, uh, the objective is not defined specifically on the negative samples generated by the augmentation function, it remains challenging to derive the relationship between specific augmentation same functions and lower bound of mutual information, and we shall leave it as a future work. Alternatively, we may view the objective from the metric learning perspective, where the pairwise objective coincide, coincides with the traditional triplet loss. In this way, we highlight the importance of appropriate documentation schemes, which is often neglected in previous informax based methods. Then, we'll briefly go through experiments and present some analysis. For comprehensive evaluation, we use five widely used datasets to study the performance of transductive node representations. The datasets are collected from real-world networks from different domains. We include a broad range of methods as baselines, including traditional node embedding methods, GNN models, as well as supervised methods. We follow a linear evaluation scheme in previous studies where the model is firstly trained in an unsupervised manner and the learned representations are fed into a simple logistic reaction model. For all baselines, we employ a two-layer GCN model as the encoder and report the performance in terms of classification and accuracy. The overall performance is summarized in this table. We will observe that GCA consistently performs better than unsupervised baselines by considerable margins. Also, we particularly note that GCA is competitive with models trained with supervision on all datasets. We also conduct ablation studies on the adaptive augmentation module. We will replace the topology and the attribute augmentation function with a uniform sampling function, respectively, and the results are shown in this table. From the table, we see that both topology level and node attribute level adaptive augmentation scheme improve model performance consistently on all datasets. Last, we investigate the impact of critical hyperparameters, namely removal probabilities that control the generation of graph views. The plot shows the model performance with varied removal probabilities from 10% to 90%. It is seen under different magnitudes of perturbation, our model performs steadily as long as the parameters are not set too large. Finally, let's conclude my presentation. We have developed a novel graph contrast learning framework GCA with adaptive augmentation. We argue that important nodes and attributes should be preserved during augmentation to force the model learn intrinsic patterns of graphs. Specifically, we set the removal probability inversely proportional to centrality scores of the edges or attributes to reflect their, their importance. Our proposed method achieved the state-of-the-art performance and bridges the gap between unsupervised and supervised learning. I think my work only contributes some preliminary results to self-supervised learning on graphs. And nowadays, graph self-supervised learning has become a promising way to learn representations without human annotations. Stemming from traditional network embedding approaches, graph contrast learning has established a new paradigm for unsupervised representation learning on graphs. However, the development of graph, con graph contrast learning remains nascent, yet calls for a principled understanding of it. 
I hope my work will further solicit more interesting ideas in this field. Here are some useful resources that may benefit your own research. I collect a list of must-read papers, surveys, and talks. It will be regularly updated with ongoing research work. Also, my co-author Yi Chen and I have developed a PyTorch library for graph contrast learning, featuring several mainstream graph contrast learning models, and hopefully it will be released in late March. Please stay tuned. And finally, we have conducted a thorough empirical study of graph contrast learning along different dim design dimensions. It will be presented at the self supervised learning workshop co-located with the web conference this year. Here are some bibliographies cited in these slides. We have made our code available, and you may scan these QR codes for further details. I think my presentation will stop here. I sincerely thank you for your attention. Should you have further questions, please don't hesitate to reach me at the Q&A extension. Thank you.